Oh, your mother's it's failed you. Your mo- mother's, our mother's failed you. Mother's failed you. Mother's failed you in relationship. They failed you. Yes, they did. And I wish I had my mom on here. Yes, they did. Mother, <laughs> they, you know, the ge- ba- baby boomers and Generation X women failed their daughters because you were taught to be individuals. Yeah. And that's not, that's but not you're good. not independent, but you don't make independent money. You were taught to be independent. Black men are actually more loyal than black women because they're still trying to date. They're accepting women who are larger. They're accepting women with kids. They're accepting women who have all these different fingers and hairs and nails and tattoos. Black, I have talked to a woman last night who was 23 years old. Who said, I said, if I put you in a room with the kind of men you said you want, would they pick you? And they were non-black men. She said, no. I said, if I put you in the kind of men, room with men you want and were black, would they accept you? She said, yes. Why? Because of our culture. We have Black men have accepted less, but now the thing is, y'all have not conceived the world where black men said enough. One thing I want to touch on is this, this uh, the, the, the idea that women don't need men financially anymore. And you hear a lot about it, especially in Korea. They talk about it a lot, where they're getting hit hard uh, with, the, with the F word, and Japan as well, or uh, like terms like, uh, female participation or women's participation in the uh, in the economy uh, is g- helping them to be more independent, to be able to rely on themselves, and that's just not the case. It's just it's wholly untrue, and it's an illusion of stability that really gives ladies the impression that they don't need a man because they're like, well, if I don't die today, then everything is good. If I'm not dying right now, if I can eat today. If my, if my paychecks stretch just enough to where I'll have a place to live at the end of the month, then I'm a stronger, independent <coughs> woman, and I don't need a man that I can raise these kids on my own and yada, 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 all that stuff. The ability not to die is now seen as a win. If you are not a star, <laughs> then you can die. Hey, David, I mean, hey, it's a, it's it, a it really is. And that's backwards. It really is. So, so you used to be able to buy a house. You should be able to get your pension from the company you work for, and you could live out your life. You know, now retirement is a joke. And if you look at Kevin Samuel's show, and if you ask a lady what her retirement plan is, they they they, they don't have one, and they never thought about it because just the, the thought, just thinking about that, that I got to save money on top of living. Are you serious? That's insane. That's crazy. And it's so god off. It's so depressing. Uh, I remember uh, whenever I was younger. And uh, the lady and I, we would sit there, we'd be talking, and she's like, I want to buy this, I want to do this, I want to travel here. And I'm like, okay, hold on one second. Come look at this bank account with me. And then she would look at it, and then she would just start crying. I'm like, you know, you can't. You're like, there's the, the, budget tell, the budget guides tell us what to do. It's not me saying no, it's, it's the money. And, <laughs> yes, yeah, the, so we just, they just complain to the budget. But, you know, she... The, Whenever, when I first met her, the financial situation she was in, she was like, nah, I need a dude. So I'm like, okay, cool. But most ladies, they really think that just because they, they're, not gonna, they're not gonna be homeless at the end of the month, that everything is gonna be okay. And their retirement plan is to work until death. They think they're gonna, they're gonna live into their 70s and 80s. And they think that there's gonna be just this super vibrant economy. They're gonna be working their amazing career uh, and making enough money. And it's actually, it, and it's, it's messed up. Check this out. Um, okay, so what? So I was looking at prices compared to 1950 versus today. In 1950, uh, uh, since then, prices have risen over 2,000 percent. Okay, 2,000. Um, and uh, so prices have more than doubled compared to wages. Wages have gone up by 1,000%, but prices have gone up by 2,000. The average salary for a man was around $3,000 a year. Okay, it was about $3,000 a year in 19. What year? In 1950, okay. it was about three, about three grand. I think maybe 3,300, maybe a bit more. The average house was 7,400. So it was like 2.3 times the, the average income, the, the average house in the United, and, and people used to get mortgages that were 20 years, 25 years. That was normal. People didn't get 30-year mortgages back then because they could afford it. Movie tickets were 46 cents. Levi jeans were $3.50. Um, today, people, like, 
people think, oh, I'm strong and independent. No, you're not. You are subsidized. The, the price of eggs has gone up by a little bit. But the actual price of eggs by themselves, if the government, the government subsidizes food. Because if the government did not subsidize food, women alone couldn't live. Food stamps today would mean nothing. Uh, the cost of eggs would be twelve dollars for uh, for yeah. a dozen eggs. Well, yeah, it, it, well, look, it's subsidized. It, the eggs, wheat. Hey, hey, don't say you doing them too bad. I got to jump in for that defense. Yeah, we're talking about these poor bitches, look, man. Let's talk about some with some money, right? They, 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 they obviously uh, um, left out of that conversation. But I do feel you. I do feel you. The ones who barely scraping by. But um, I'm gonna talk about the women who who do have. You know, substantial income. Uh, so, you know, so the fifteen percent. So, so yeah, fifteen you know out of a hundred. Okay. Yeah, uh, because I think they are the ones who have the most reluctancy to give that up, right? Because believe me, broke shorty would like somebody to come and save the day. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I think there's there's this ideology like, well, we'll put it this way: in in their nature, I think most women don't want to work right i think i think it's cool i think i think i think a society benefits when their workforce has uh increased by women joining the workforce right there are more people doing shit more people making things and getting things done and i think it is also wise as as people build up um and build up things that that they uh actually uh can contribute together but no woman wants to have to work as like i if i don't go to work we're gonna get put out like you know what i'm saying that's the part that bugs even the earners right and then so. i got something i got something for you there hold on i'm pulling something up real quick and okay. but uh so you know so people say it's a good thing um and uh there you go. So people say, you know what? You know what? No, it's a good thing. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to say it's a bad thing. I'm not going to say it's a good thing or a bad thing. What I'm going to ask is what, what outcome do you want? Because, you know, I can't tell people if it's good or bad. They're going to make the determination on their own. But the outcomes are the outcomes. So when we're looking at this number, then here's the interesting thing. Okay. This the, so this is through the research. I'm looking at this. So I'm looking at it and I say it's subsidized. So men average man by himself same thing he can't make it alone women can't make it alone average guy 42,000 average guy average caucasian male 50,000 can't make it alone if the government was not subsidizing food food is more expensive we live in a bubble it's not real the government is borrowing money to help us pay for it everybody is on food stamps everyone is on food stamps well yeah we make the like we make the poor countries grow it so that we can yeah, eat it. Every, everyone, if you buy eggs, if you buy wheat, if you buy soy, if you buy milk, these things are subsidized because the cost for the average consumer would be, un, would be unbearable. Because prices so then that means the average thousand farmer thousand. isn't making much money then. Uh, you say, well, uh, one more time? That means the average farmer isn't making much money is what you're saying. Well, they're making money because they're getting subsidized. Yeah. So the consumer isn't paying for it because the consumer cannot pay for it. We would have riots if actual food prices were reflected because men can once again, men can't do it by themselves. Women can't do it by themselves. But here's the interesting thing, right? If you put a man's income and a woman's income together, then you have the same roughly the same income that a man by himself had um, in, in 70 years ago. So essentially so, and, women joining the workforce has cut labor um, value essentially in half or uh, by a lot. Right. So I don't know the exact percentage, but I yeah. do know that the prices have gone up by roughly 2,000%. Think of a house. A house was 2.5 times the average amount. We'll use, uh, we'll use uh, Caucasians versus African-American numbers, 50,000. So, so it was 2.3, 2.5 times there was the average cost of a house. Well, a Caucasian man makes $50,000 a year. Let's just say three times his income, that's 150000 the average home purchase in the United States right now is 350000 So even if you're looking at the, the, their numbers, but it, here's the interesting thing. If you double his average income and, excuse me, you get him to $100,000, $102,000, $104,000 will be the average. Well, then he'll be right around that, that three times 
what 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 he made and, and it'll vary just by a little bit but it pretty much be the same situation back in the 1950s Every woman basically wants an average man from the 1950s. I want to be able to stay home. I want him to pay the bills. They want the average man from the 1950s. That's it. They're like, oh, this above, this amazing guy, top 10%. They used to be everybody. But once again, they just cut, uh, they've cut pay in half because they got double the workers. So uh, think about this. There are the STEM fields, right? They're male dominated. Wait, wait, before you get into that, because I was just about to say a hypothesis, right? Yes. So realistically speaking, I agree that makes sense. You you increase the number of workers, you decrease the cost of what it costs to get a worker. Right. But you also got to think there are fields where like there just aren't a lot of women, right? So those fields aren't necessarily impacted by women being in the workforce. Exactly. Where and I so was going. it would make sense that the lowest paying jobs in our country would be the jobs that men and women do on an even rate. So I'm thinking like service, the service industry, right? Um, now, I don't know what that looks like for jobs where like it's mostly women. So I'm thinking like daycare, right? Those might even be, I don't know if those are lower. So there, there are some like female dominated fields that pay a lot. Uh, dental hygienist, I think uh, by like the, the assistant, the one that helps uh, with, uh, mm-hmm. with surgeries and things in the room, those mm-hmm. are mostly ladies and they're mostly attractive ladies that do really well because being a people person, because they're, they're salesmen pretty much. They get you comfortable and they tell you about it and you buy it from them. Mm-hmm. And so they have, they're, they're kind of like um, uh, uh, medical sales reps, which are a, a lot of ladies. It looks like you're, uh, medical sales reps look like America's you know what next top model all of my all of the medical sales people i know are women i know like yeah, three or four because, all of them are that's women. because they're very good with people they're very personable and we don't and if they're there and most of them are really attractive so the doctors don't mind them coming around oh you wanted to talk yeah uh-huh. you got this machine really okay and the uh-huh. doctors are mostly men so uh it sounds like what you're saying is that if there is a gender bias that uh it kind of puts value on the position, but you're saying, uh, hey, do you saying uh, fields without a gender bias seems like the labor's depreciated? No, no, no. I'm saying just speci- if you're if you're saying men, if you if we take all the women out of the workforce, this, this is where Ishai is going. He's not going to say it this way, but if you take all the women out of the workforce, most men's income is going are going to go up, right? Because now we have less labor. The right, way. it's just from a supply demand standpoint, yeah. I Correct. think, but I would argue that overall, like economic output would decrease, obviously. Like, I don't economic know. output potentially, I mean, pr- probably so, probably so. But let's let's be real like, what happened during the pandemic? Everybody know, everybody qu- not quit their job, but as of right now, there's a labor shortage, right? People are not working, okay. Right. Um, from what I understand, that one of the industries that took the biggest hit was the service industry. The service industry is one of the few industries in the country where women out earn men, period. Like women, like waitresses out earn uh, their male counterparts, right? Mm -hmm. I read somewhere that if you have a hostess that is a woman, like you make 20% more income or some shit like that. Don't quote, don't quote any of that, right? But what else did we see? During the pandemic, marriage for every ethnic group went up besides black people. Right. So what I take that to mean is women of other races outside of black women saying, hey, this is difficult. This is hard. This is uncertain. I'm getting the hell out the market. I'm getting a husband. Let, 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 let's let take it. Let's take it out of opinion real quick. And let's see this. Let's see right here. Uh, screen. So I would say, yes, less output. But that's what women would want. Yeah, you think um, if my wife right now had the ability to retire? She would say, I don't know, man. I don't know about if I want this economic output to decrease. I mean, <laughs> she'd be like, so, fuck these hoes. I'm out. <laughs> right, right, right. I'm uh, just speaking of like a whole person, Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're facing worst uh, worker shortage since World War II. Uh, they say, you know, they, they call it the, the she session. Shortage of 4.6 million people. Wait, wait, the, the she session? <laughs> well, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. If you Google that, it'll come up. Ladies are quitting in uh, record numbers. And so check this out. Uh oh, we don't. Uh-oh. It looks like about. Let's close this. Now check this out. 
as a result of this, as a result of less people in the workforce, as a result, American incomes are, raising, are rising across the board as employees have hiked wages in an increasingly competitive market. Wow. Check this out. So this is not an, this is not an opinion, all right? This is not an opinion. If there are less people in the workforce, the people get paid more. Now, if women were home, I'll tell you an industry that would suffer uh, greatly, uh, restaurants, because uh, the women would be, the women will be cooking more. But if the wages increase because of the, 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 uh, the, the decrease in the, uh, the ladies working, then the money would still be there, right? Because people, we're, everybody's still gonna eat the same amount of food, not at a restaurant, they might cook it at mm -hmm. home, but you're gonna have to order, you're gonna have to buy the same amount of food, your groceries are gonna look the same. Now, uh, we'll, you will do less in fuel because you'll have less people driving to work. There are certain industries that would go down, uh, but for the most part, the, the core industries, food and things like that, would stay very high. Fuel, that would give us the opportunity to, ex to export more fuel. Um, but so this is, so yes. And as you were mentioning before, it's exactly what I was going to point out. But it's, it's, um, The it's fields, the, the STEM fields that are male dominated, uh, that have a small percentage of women are some of the only fields, those in the trades that men dominate are some of the only fields that men can get into where it's not 50% women, where a lot of women have not joined, the wages are still way above the average. So what should you do? You should go, if you're a man, you should go, okay, where are ladies not going for work? What are they not doing? What, what has, a, what has a, a, a six to seven out of 10 a diff, in, a entry level that's difficult that women don't like to do, that's skilled? You go there and you can make money because those careers have not been gutted yet. Double the number of doctors. Just double it and tell me if they still make the same amount of money. They can't. Double yeah. the amount of that engineers. Makes, yeah, that makes a lot of sense.